Yeah. You now Got actually it. have more and more voting power and more and more ways to impact the team. Got it. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, franchise. Next, we'd like to welcome up Fan Pictor. Hi, everyone. I'm Stefan Juro, CEO and co founder of Fan Pictor. Before we start off, um, we've distributed flyers on, on, on the seats um, because we want to have you participate in one of our in-game entertainment solutions. And an iPhone is up for grabs, so we play that at the end of the pitch. So um, download that app and we do that. Um, one of our clients, Roger Federer, who is also Swiss, um, turned to um, US managers um, to get advice on commercial success. And now looking, looking back at his career, he hasn't done a bad job. And when we came over in fall to the US, um, we obviously wanted to also be part of that um, scene. And um, in sports, the US is the center of the world. So um, we are active in the sponsorship market. And there we are looking in the US at the 40 billion and in the EU at a 16 billion um, market size. And um, there's a huge trend now going towards digital where we see every additional dollar spent in this year, 72 cents are going on mobile. And um, so what is our value proposition? We, um, everyone here understands uh, that teams want to increase revenue, that sponsors um, want to sell more products and services, and fans want to have great memories. So we address all these three needs. Um, fans are engaged before the event, during the event, and after the event with us, both online and on-site. And um, we are helping brands bridge the gap between live event activation and actual business outcomes in the retail space. And um, so at, this, at the heart of fan pick, there's fan engagement and sponsor activation. So I want to show you a quick clip of our activation during the NHL All-Star game last month in LA. So what we do, we have this fan engagement up front, but what's really driving the value is the data behind it. So we can provide insights into different areas in the stadium, be it the corporate zone, fan sector, or family sector, um, generating um, different um, segmentations for our partners. And, but that's not limited to inside the stadium. We can also do that um, around the world, um, be it um, the fans are online or in front of the TV. And then we're going to provide that real time to our brand partners um, to generate um, effective messaging. The pricing model is simple. It's a um, set up an integration fee and then a monthly licensing fee. Our competitive advantages are built around um, a robust patent and pending technology, um, which is quickly and seamlessly integrated in our clients' um, apps. Um, our solutions uh, thrill fans in a way um, where money can't buy these experiences. And um, we've proven on several occasions that we managed to engage those fans and grow um, the fan bases for our partners. What have been the achievements over the last um, few um, years? We had uh, 35 plus um, professional events that we supported with our technology. Um, particularly proud I am um, about our lead engineer in the audio space. Um, before joining FanPictor, um, he was um, traveling the world advising um, renowned opera houses like the Sydney Opera House, how to ideally set up um, um, the acoustics there, what we use for our data-driven technology. And we have long-term relationships on multi-year contracts with our partners like UBS, Porsche, or Roger Federer. 
what's, um, what's up for us next? Um, we are looking um, at um, the UEFA Champions League. Yesterday, we finally got the green light to be integrated in the app. And we all know that the Champions League is not the smallest of all um, properties in sports. Um, next month, we work again with Roger Federer, and we also have a surprise for Andy Murray up the sleeve. And watch out for us for this year's NHL playoffs. Now I would like you to um, open that um, app and we can play that instant win game um, together and you can win this um, iPhone. So what you do is um, you open that fan picture app and um, on the bottom right there's the live mode and then we, um, we're gonna see who's gonna win that phone. Yeah, and now let's see who is the winner. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Have fun. Appreciate it. <laughs> Whoops. Good. Thank you, fan picture. We'll take questions from the judges now. Uh, very cool technology. I think the um, uh, so the the activation how how it how to talk me through again how that works in the stadium and kind of how do you engage yeah. the crowd. So for example, at the in the NHL case, um, we are then embedded in the Teams app or sure. in the in the Brands app, and then you're just um, similar to what I said. Now you're just prompted then by a video on the jumbotron saying, okay, now in 10 seconds we start. And then you, you just open it, um, click that button, and then the um, high frequency signal that we send through the audio is gonna sync those phones and the magic starts. Got it. Um, very cool, very neat. Uh, I, sometimes I struggle with businesses that are predicated on selling to sports teams only though, and, and UEFA and whatnot. I assume that, that those are hard deals to get done and teams always wanna slash at 50%. Give us a little bit of a sense of what's the monetization strategy look like. And, and yeah. how, how big can this be? Yeah, I mean, th that's why I mentioned the, the sponsorship or the brands as the, as the main market. And I think the, the UEFA example is actually great for that. That we say, okay, um, MasterCard is running that priceless campaign. And with that um, technology that we have, the instant win one, um, they said, okay, we want to use that as a, what they call a sole and exclusive activation, that they have really a right to activate in every stadium um, they are, um, the teams are playing um, to do a price. And so what, what we do with them is we have, for example, um, a seat upgrade, that you play that before the game and then they can come in the front row and sit next to Pep Guardiola and hear him um, shout the next call. Um, or in a sold out game with that um, technology, you're gonna get the prize to get finally tickets to that game, or you stay on and you are invited to a press conference and ask the first question in there. Can you talk a little bit about the, anal you said you can get analytics in stadium, but you also said at home. Can you just explain what, the, what, what kind of data you can get at the team level? Yes. Um, so in the stadium, that's, um, that's clear the segmentation for the different areas, be it a corporate zone or family zone. And outside with our technology, if you're integrated in the app, you can also participate from outside. So let's say um, we are looking at a, at a football game taking place in Manchester, and then you, you, are being, um, you, you are doing a quiz and being asked, okay, who is your man of the match? And then um, everyone can vote then from, from remote uh, location, and you get the data then um, depending on how they um, locked up, um, um, how they um, logged in with a Facebook account that we can say, okay, we, we can also break those analytics from outside on, on that level from um, age, gender, um, location, and all levels of granularity they are willing to share. How do you guys think about um, competitive advantage, right? With, with all these different solution providers that are coming to the teams, the stadiums, and trying to offer different types of sponsor activation 
stuff, right? How do, how do you sustain an advantage here? Yeah, um, I mean, we have, you are forced to, to be innovative for that because it, it can't be one or two products you do. And um, actually, when we started um, three years ago, our first product was a, a digital card stand. So you had the chance to design a card stand, and then um, people could vote live, and you didn't do an instant card stand in, in, the, in the stadium. And then we thought, OK, we have to bring that to the smartphone. So we've um, developed this um, data over audio technology to do that. And so we are forced to, um, to keep um, the innovation um, path going. And, um, and when we look, though, at, um, at brands, they are looking for experiential prices. They don't want to have passive um, consumption of signages. So what we do there is um, we, we provide those experiences to, um, to, to the brands that are willing to pay for that. Great. Thank you very much, Fan Pictor, and thank you for the amazing gift.